Tom Corbett is the Republican candidate for governor in the great state of Pennsylvania. He's just gone public with his position on jobs, and his position is that unemployed people are unemployed because they want to be unemployed. Mr. Corbett explaining at a campaign stop in Elizabethtown, quote, the jobs are there, but if we keep extending unemployment, people are just going to sit there. The jobs are there. You hear that, Pennsylvania? Never mind what you hear about five applicants for every job there is in the country. Tom Corbett, Republican nominee for governor of Pennsylvania, says the jobs are there. And you're just too lazy to take those jobs. It should be noted that that message that unemployed people are just lazy is not a Tom Corbett original. That message keeps turning up among Republican candidates this year. We have put in so much entitlement into our government that we really have spoiled our citizenry and said, you don't want the jobs that are available. That, of course, is Sharon Engel, Republican candidate for Senate in Nevada, saying that unemployed people are spoiled. Her fellow Nevada Republican, Congressman Dean Heller, recently warned that unemployment benefits may be creating a nation of hobos. He actually used the word hobos. Uh, and it's not just Republican candidates or Republican congressmen up for re-election. This attacking the unemployed thing is also being pushed by Republican leaders in Congress. You know, we should not be giving cash to people who, who basically are just going to go blow it on drugs. That doesn't create new jobs. In fact, if anything, continuing to pay people unemployment compensation is a disincentive for them to seek new work. The Republican Party appears poised to contest the elections this year on the basis of, <laughs> hey, unemployed guy, we hate you. When they're not objecting to unemployment benefits on the basis that unemployed people are lazy and don't deserve them, the Republicans have another line of attack. They say if we are going to play un pay unemployment benefits to those lazy people, it can't be added to the deficit. Those benefits must be paid for. This week, the Senate is back in session, and once again, Republicans are blocking the extension of unemployment benefits on the grounds that the deficit is just too big right now. We can't add those unemployment benefits for lazy people to the deficit. A few months ago, Republican Senator Jim Bunning started Republican objections to unemployment benefits when he stood alone in the Senate against them. Even though he objected alone back then, you saw the seeds of what's happening now among Republicans, when some Republicans at the time said they had Jim Bunning's back. This is a temporary extension. It's over $10 billion. And all Senator Bunning was saying, quite correctly, is it ought to be paid for. Republican Senator John Kyle of Arizona adding to his argument that unemployed people just don't want to get jobs. His conviction that any benefits for unemployed people can't be added to the deficit. They must, as he said, be paid for. Sorry, unemployed lazy people. Your benefits add to the deficit, so we can't help you. If there's one thing Republicans want voters to count on them for right now, it's to prioritize the deficit over all things. They really want to reduce that deficit. It's their main focus. Anything that's not paid for, sorry, we can't afford it. It's the deficit. No exceptions. No exceptions. Except one really, really expensive exception. How are you going to pay the $678 billion just on the tax cuts for people over making Chris. more than $200,000 a year? You should never raise taxes in order to cut taxes. Surely, Congress has the authority, and it would be right to, if we decide we want to cut taxes to spur the economy, not to have to raise taxes in order to offset those costs. You do need to offset the cost of increased spending, and that's what Republicans object to, but you should never have to offset the cost of a deliberate decision to reduce tax rates on Americans. Ta-da! Remember, John Kyle is one of the Republicans blocking unemployment benefits for people who've lost their jobs because that can't be added to the deficit. But nearly $700 billion of tax cuts that benefit people who make more than $200,000 a year? Tax cuts for rich people? Those? Go ahead and add them to the deficit. Just to be clear, a deficit is money into the government, like taxes, minus the money out of the government, like spending. That's it. Those are the only two ingredients, money in and money out. If you're saying you don't care about one of those things, if you're saying taking in less taxes isn't a big deal to you, then the deficit isn't really a big deal to you. Those two things are equally important, the taxes coming in and the money going out. Disregarding one of them would be like saying, hey, let me make you a gin and tonic. Right? Uh, here's a glass <clears throat> with some ice in it. Right? I'm making you a gin and tonic. 
Here's your gin and tonic. <clears throat> Here's your go. Here's your gin and tonic. You ready? There's your delicious gin and tonic. That's it. Taxes and spending are the two ingredients that combine to make the deficit, and you're just not going to count the taxes part of it. That's like saying, this is your gin and tonic. Sorry, we don't have any gin. Enjoy. If you say tax cuts don't need to be paid for, then you're faking it when you say you care about the deficit. You are faking it. You are lying. You are being stupefyingly ignorant. Take your pick. But if Democrats let them get away with this, let them get away with this argument against spending and for deficit bulging tax cuts, if they let that argument win the day, Democrats are not just aiding and abetting stupefying ignorance and bad drinks. They're also digging their own political graves here. You win elections by improving the economy. And what the economy needs right now is stimulus. And no matter how much Republicans want to crow about tax cuts and how tax cuts are so important, they don't even need to be paid for. Just lard them onto the deficit. Tax cuts don't really stimulate the economy that well. What does is the unemployment benefits that Republicans are blocking. According to even the conservative economist Mark Zandi, here's how it works. Every buck that the government spends on an across-the-board tax cut creates a dollar and two cents in economic activity. Not very much bang for that buck. Every dollar the government spends on unemployment benefits, on the other hand, creates a dollar sixty-three in economic activity. That money is spent. It goes right back into the economy. It makes sense. You're giving money to people who are broke and don't have jobs and desperately need money. They need to be able to spend that money. It goes into the economy, it drives demand, it helps the whole country's economy. Tax cuts help a tiny little bit, but nowhere near as much. This is one of those easy cases where the right politics and the right policy and the tasty drink line up together for Democrats. Republicans complaining about the deficit is hereby negated forever, as long as they're still pushing for tax cuts for rich people to be added to that deficit. <laughs> Democrats can do well politically in this case, by going for policies that are actually right for the economy, not policies that are only right for people who don't believe in math or in gin. Joining us now is Ezra Klein, staff writer for The Washington Post and an MSNBC contributor. Ezra, thanks very much for joining us. Good evening. Is there some sort of secret deficit equation that John Kyle knows about that the rest of us don't? Is this one of those things where the right has their own fake facts about this that we just don't understand? No, not, not, we've not actually uh, lifted the laws of arithmetic quite yet, <laughs> um, even if we have changed drink making. No, I mean, this is a, an issue, right? You, there is a philosophical level in American politics. And on that philosophical level, folks on the right believe government should be smaller, tinier. And so things that appear to make it that way, like cutting taxes such that the government doesn't have as much revenue to spend on things, are is held supreme. They don't function under the normal laws because they are a matter of principle. But when you're trying to balance a budget, when you're trying to run an economy, principle and pragmatism can sometimes come into conflict, and, and that's what we have here. You can't do this. You can't balance budget. You can't care about the deficit and say that one of the two things that make a deficit don't matter. The common wisdom right now um, that's being driven by Republicans, but not only by Republicans, is, is that the deficit has to be cut immediately, that government spending has to stop. And I say it's not only being driven by Republicans, because when I talk to Democrats, I often hear them parroting that, not pushing back on that, not making an argument about that that's based on economic principles. Is that your experience here as well, that Democrats are sort of buying into this ridiculous line? Uh, absolutely. And, and there's a real problem here, right? The deficit conversation is a tough conversation because you can never tell if people are actually talking about the deficit. The deficit conversation works really, really well for minority parties, in part because two things. One, during a recession, you need to have a deficit. It's how the government increases economic activity. That's what's so important. That's what stimulus spending functionally is, the government adding money to the economy. You tax it, you cut it from spending, you're just bailing water from one part of the boat into another part of the boat. And then number two, when we actually get into these issues, the deficit is a great way for the minority party to try to stop spending, stop accomplishments, stop legislation. They argued it on health care, which actually reduced the deficit. They're arguing it on stimulus, which by nature has to increase the deficit. But so it gets very, very difficult to say whether people are actually trying to recommend the tough policies that would reduce the federal debt or whether or not they're just trying to get short-term political gain. And what is so politically damaging about what Kyle did today is he showed it to be the latter. He said, actually, we're only worried about the deficit when it's something Democrats want to do, when it is our principles on the line, you know what, it's actually not that big of a deal. As a matter of principle, we don't need to worry about the deficit quite right then. It's just, I mean, it, what it means is that there ought to be a caption 
or at least an asterisk that just appears on the lower third of the screen every time a Republican <laughs> starts talking about the deficit right now. I don't really mean this. Um, last question for you. There, there does seem to be a disconnect between national politicians and state politicians on this. Uh, governors across the country just held their conference up in Boston. And Pat Quinn from Illinois said up there, uh, quote, I'm disappointed in Washington. We can't have Herbert Hoover economics coming out of some of the members of Congress. They don't understand how you fight a recession. The federal government has to run a deficit in recessionary times because we've got to get out of the ditch. Explaining some of what you just explained here. But why is it that governors get this but not national Democrats. Because budgets to them aren't, aren't matters of philosophy. Look, state, state budgets in 2010 are looking at a $200 billion shortfall. In 2011, $180 billion shortfall. That is a massive anti-stimulus. That is contraction in the economy. And they know what happens if they can't fund that. They can't run a deficit. States 49 of 50.